OK, so what about a reflection about some arbitrary line at whatever angle I choose? Well, I've set up a little animation here to help us figure out what's going on. So this black line is a line at angle theta. All right. Wherever I move that line, I'm interested in the reflection of 1, 0 up to here, and then later on from 0, 1 to here. I'll come back to 0, 1 in a minute. Let's do 1, 0 first. How am I going to work out the coordinates of this point up here? Well, first notice this angle is always the same as this angle. Think about that. This, we're reflecting over this line. The angle here between the line and the x-axis is going to be the same as the angle between the line and the reflection. Can you believe that? That those two angles are always equal? OK. So now how am I going to work out the coordinates of this? Well, how far is it from the origin? Think about that. How far is that point always from the origin? Wherever I move this line, how far is that point from the origin? Well, because we're rotating around the origin, this point is always a fixed distance of 1 from the origin. Always. Can you see that? It's going around a circle of radius 1. It's moving around the unit circle. So this length here is 1. But if this angle is theta, then this angle must also be theta. So that means this total angle here is 2 theta. Now we're getting somewhere. The x-coordinate of this point is this distance here. If that's 2 theta, and that's a right angle, then this distance must be 1 cos 2 theta. What about the y-coordinate? Well, the y-coordinate is this distance here, and that's 1 sine 2 theta. So the coordinates up here are cos 2 theta and sine 2, two theta. Are you comfortable with that so far? Finding 0, 1 is a little bit trickier, but the first column of my transformation matrix is going to be cos 2 theta, sine 2 theta. Okay. So let's do the harder one. Let's work out where the image of 0, 1 ends up. It's down here. Watch it as I move the line and think about how am I going to work out the coordinates of this reflected point. Wherever I move that line, how am I going to work out the coordinates of that point? Are you ready? Well, the first question to ask is, how big is this angle here? If this angle is theta, how big must this angle be? Well, it must be 90 minus theta. Have I convinced you of that? Whatever the angle this is, this one is 90 minus it because they fill up that 90 degree angle. OK, but what do I need to work out the coordinates of this point down here? Well, I'm going to need to know this angle here. Can you see how we're going to get there? Firstly, notice that this angle has to be the same as this one because it's reflected over the line. So this angle here must also be 90 minus theta. That got a bit messy, didn't it? But the angle I really need to know here is not that one, but this one here. 
how am I going to get this angle? Well, it's the 90 minus theta we already got. Take away this theta. So this angle is 90 minus 2 theta. Have a think about that. This angle here is always going to be 90 minus theta, take away another theta, which is 90 minus 2 theta. Wherever I put it, that angle is going to be 90 minus 2 theta. Now we know what to do. Because the x coordinate of this point is going to be this, which is going to be 1, still 1, it's going to be 1 cos 90 minus 2 theta. And the y coordinate is going to be this distance, which is the same 1 times the sine of 90 minus 2 theta. But wait a minute, we can do even better than that. If this is 90 minus 2 theta, how big is this angle over here? Well, the one in the corner is a right angle, so this angle must be 2 theta. And that makes our job even easier. That means the x coordinate of this reflected point, this distance up here, if we look at the 2 theta side, is actually going to be sine 2 theta. And the y coordinate, this length here, is actually going to be cos. Oh, my computer doesn't want to let me draw today. Cos 2 theta. But there is a small problem. The small problem is this length here is actually negative. It's below that axis. So it's actually negative cos 2 theta. Phew, that was a bit complicated. Not to worry, the thing you have to remember is this matrix for reflection about a line. Don't worry, this is actually on your formula sheet. The image of 1, 0 went across to cos 2 theta, sine 2 theta. And the image of 0, 1 went to sine 2 theta, negative cos 2 theta. If you didn't like my hand wavy swap this angle for that one over there, you can, year 12s in particular who've done trig identities, you can get there by replacing sine 90 minus with cos and cos 90 minus with sine using your trig identities. Either way, this is the matrix. Now the other problem people often ask me is, but I've got y equals 3x, how do I end up with x tan theta? Well, Think about what the gradient of that line actually represents. The gradient of the line is the rise over the run. Well, that is the rise is the opposite to this angle, and the run is the adjacent to that angle theta. That means the gradient of the line, the number you're multiplying by x, is tan theta. So whatever you've got, y equals a half x, a quarter x, whatever the number is, that number, that coefficient is tan theta. From which you can work out theta, from which you can work out the matrix.